also the creative corner, but everyone also knows you as a very active Wikipedian. Um, for the last, I don't know how many months, four or five months, you've also been working for Wikimedia Netherlands uh, on projects called Wikipedia the Museum. And I think uh, the sum of all knowledge is your own project, right? Yes. But it's, it's, it kind of works together, so explain to us how, how it is. Well, obviously, I that's the thing. You know, actually, when I was setting up, I was thinking I should never use this cable because it goes to nowhere. And of course, I used the cable. So that was, that's what preparation does for you. Nothing. <laughs> anyway. Yes, here we are. Well, thank you very much uh, uh, for attending the session. Um, I'm going to be talking about two projects. And Sandra already introduced me a bit. Um, so I'm going to be talking about these two projects, the Summer for Knowledge and Wikipedia Collections, which is in your leaflet as Wikipedia New Museum. It used to have that name, but we actually came up with a better name. Um, so a little bit about myself, Sandra actually said, I think, virtually all of this. So I've been a Wikipedian for almost 10 years, so I feel quite old, actually, in a way. Uh, I used to be a board member for uh, Wikimedia Netherlands, um, mostly on, on, on GLAM partnerships. And um, I used to be a Wikipedia resident in this very building, the National Library and the National uh, Archive for a year. Um, and yeah, like Sandra said, I'm, I'm really, I'm also um, a developer. So I really try to find, you know, places where I can, you know, use both my skills as a Wikipedia and as a developer and somehow combine the two. But the interesting thing is actually the second project I didn't do any coding for this, this was just project lead, which is very weird because I've never done anything like that before. So it was a bit scary, but I think it turned out all right. Um, well, anyway, let's start with this sentence that all of you know. It's the Wikimedia mission or vision statement. Uh, imagine a world in which every single human can share in the sum of our knowledge. In many respects, I think uh, we, see this, uh, we see the sentence and we all agree with it, but in many ways, it turns out to be this. We are mostly interested in improving Wikipedia and not in, you know, the sum of knowledge and getting it distributed everywhere in the world. And that's, that's like a real shame. And I think like, like uh, Historypedia is a very good example of how we can reuse this content. So anyway, um, uh, it, it, in many, many, many times it looks, the picture looks like this. So you have all the galleries, libraries, archives, museums, and they all input stuff to Wikipedia. They have volunteers, they have image donations, um, but they, not, they, don't get it, uh, they don't get it back. Well, I'll, I would say that we should also try to turn it the other way around. How can we use Wikipedia content to enrich the visitor, uh, visitor's experience? How can we reuse it so that we actually add to the sum of all knowledge for everyone in the world? Um, well, the main problem is that exporting data from Wikipedia used to be like absolutely awful. This is a template that I looked up somewhere on the English Wikipedia and it's like line noise. Nobody can read this. But fortunately, uh, thanks to Wikidata, we finally have a proper structured way to actually export our data into a format that's uh, reusable in many other applications. So, you know, oh, so things look like this. So this is like the data representation of a Monet painting called Impression Sunrise. It's actually the painting that gave the Impressionists their name. But this is not something that many people would really like to read, you know, when they're lying in bed and let's read about this painting. Oh, it's all Jason, it's too bad. Fortunately, we have Wikidata, which is uh, um, a little bit better. But still, you know, this is a, a Wikidata item about the painting. But the painting, can you spot it? It's over there. It's a file name. So that's like, it's not actually an, an image. It's not the painting. It's just the file name of the image. Fortunately, we have, uh, you know, we don't actually know what this painting looks like. Um, fortunately, Magnus Manske, here he is again. I think every talk should m uh, mention Magnus Panske at least once. <laughs> so this is a Magnus Panske shout out. Uh, created this application called the Resonator, which is basically the, you know, a Wikipedia for, for, for Wikidata in terms of that it represents the, the content in a more visually attractive way. And of course, you know, many paintings do not have an article on the English Wikipedia or any other language uh, editions, but um, this one by accident has uh, uh, an article about this painting. But still, you know, there's something nagging about this article. If you look at it, it's like it's, it's an article about the image, uh, um, about the painting, but how much space does this painting occupy? No, it's this. So we have a lot of context, a lot of content about this painting, but the painting itself is actually quite small in the interface. Well, obviously, and I'm going to name check the other thing that everybody mentions, which is, of course, the Rijksmuseum website, which has been, you know, mentioned a lot of times. It's a very good example of, you know, 
how can you um, actually make this whole content more visually appealing to a large audience? And I think the Rijksmuseum website did that pretty well because you know they placed the thing that people care about the most, the paintings, centrally on the website. So the thing is, we can't do this on Wikipedia because Wikipedia has a very, uh, a very, very, very strict format. It's always you know the same layout. But the thing is, with Wikidata, we can do something like this. Um, because in my opinion, you know, Wikipedia articles don't need to look the same all the time, or at least not when you reuse them outside of Wikipedia. We are very tend to reuse uh, layouts that we already know, but why should every you know, reuse of, of, of Wikipedia content look like Wikipedia? That makes no sense. So the wonderful thing about Wikidata is, and this is like the most, I think the most important thing that it has, is we know what something is. So there was this property called instance of, which is like the most, the, I think the mostly used, the, 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 the most used property on Wikidata. So we actually know this data item, it's a painting. So I thought, what would Wikipedia look like if we took into account the fact that we can actually use a different layout uh, depending on what kind of item we're looking at? So um, fortunately, there was a hackathon a couple of months back, so I thought, you know, it's, you know let's, let's just build the, the thing. And um, this actually started out as a project um, that Martin Dammers created, the sum of all paintings, um, you know, which is a project to get all metadata of all paintings in the world on Wikidata. And I thought we need a nice uh, visualization of that whole project. So this project started out as the sum of all paintings, but I thought, you know, let's, let's think big, sum of all knowledge. So I code a little bit and uh, I've put something online. So it's online at this wonderful URL, it's sum.biker.org. And basically it's like a re-visualization uh, of Wikidata content combined with Wikipedia, Wikimedia Commons, and uh, I plan to add more you know, sources. So for example, something like the Histopedia timeline could be you know, an excellent addition to this thing. It doesn't need to you know, stay inside the Wikimedia ecosystem as long as you know, the content is, uh, is, uh, is free. Um, well, anyway, um, so if we have this, this, this thing again, you know, the, the Monet painting, and if we look at it, you know, this is the Wikidata view, and this is how it looks on some of our knowledge. You know, it's like a clone of the Rex Museum website, basically. But if you scroll a little bit more down, you see, uh, no, actually, you, and because we have like 288 languages in Wikipedia and Wikidata, uh, you can also read, even though it's an image, but you can read this thing in all these languages. So if you want to read it in Arab, you can. There is another part, if you scroll down, which has on the left side, you see um, the actual Wikipedia text from the article, because like I said, this image, this painting has an article. But on the right hand side, you see stuff that's from Wikidata. So for example, I have a big download button because I think you know, it's very important that people know that this stuff is reusable. So that's a download button. And all the other stuff here is all um, translated properties from Wikidata. But also, um, like um, this Wikipedia guys mentioned in the previous talk, we have Wikidata query. So if you click through to the uh, um, article about Monet, we can also show all his paintings, which is wonderful. You know, we used to, uh, what we needed to do was create uh, a separate gallery for every artist all the time. It's a lot of handwork, and now we can do it automatically. So if you click through, you get, like I said, another uh, visual, uh, uh, another layout, because of course you don't want you know, this bearded man like this on your screen. You want to have a, uh, a more proper uh, layout. Um, and like I said, here at the bottom what you see is uh, a summary of all his work. So you can actually look at all the works that Monet made and you can scroll through them, which I think is well a very nice addition that we can actually do on Wikipedia. So um, the Netherlands Institute of Sound and Vision, which is uh, in Dutch you say built and geluid, as some of you have noticed yesterday, um, they were very interested in, into this application because they thought like, well, this, this is very, very nice, you know, and they actually, they have a wiki themselves. It's called the built and geluid wiki. Um, but they have a very hard time trying to get that structure because it's all wiki text and we all know wiki text is not the best uh, structure. So they asked me like, can you do something like this but for Dutch television history? So what they wanted was um, something like the IMDB, the Internet Movie Database, uh, but for Dutch television history. So what I did is they have a thesaurus called the GTAA, which is a list basically of everyone that ever appeared on Dutch television, like seriously everyone. So. I mean, maybe you all have a number, I don't know, could be. Um, so I started linking uh, uh, existing Wikidata items with GTAA IDs, so we could make the connection between what's in the archive, what do they have in terms of wiki articles, what do they have in terms of images, videos, etc., and what do we have on Wikidata. 
So I focused on the creators first because those, I think, are the most uh, interesting things because they have lots of biographical data, birthdays, etc., and those are usually the most, um, uh, they have the most information on Wikidata. And I said to them, you know, we could, of course, you could rewrite your whole wiki in a structured format, but why not reuse the hard work of the Wikimedia volunteers? You know, it's all there. Let's use it. So I created this website for them, which looks an awful lot like the Sum of Our Knowledge website, which is not a coincidence. It's, it's more or less the same code. But I added a few things that are only available on their version. Like, for example, what you can do, you can actually switch between the Wikipedia text uh, of, an, of an artist, and you can switch to the uh, built and geluid wiki text of the same person. Um, so let's just summarize uh, this project. Um, it's completely open source, so it's all on GitHub if you want to use the code, reuse the code, edit, you know, open pull requests, uh, say there's a bug here, um, please do so. Um, on the front, it's all PHP, so it runs on virtually every web server. For the back end, the part that translates Wikidata uh, to the front end, there is this JSON API that makes it a little bit more manageable because Wikidata is still quite a difficult uh, format to pass. And uh, yeah, you can check it out if you want. So anyway, this was like a hobby project. But um, I started thinking like, if we can do, you know, if we can reuse Wikipedia content on a website, why can't we reuse Wikipedia content in a museum? That would be awesome, right? So... Um, this is a project called Wikipedia Collections, and it's uh, well, something I've been doing the last couple of months. So the thing is, it started out as actually as an idea by Sebastian Teburg, who is not in this room, but um, who uh, saw this idea that went on in Catalonia, where they had this small project where they had an uh, augmented reality application where people could photograph using, I think, the Layer app. Um, they could photograph a um, painting, and you could get more information about the painting. So um, what we had, and this is very fortunate, we had an anonymous uh, patron who said, I really like you, um, I really like to give you some money to do some investigative projects, and we got 25,000 euros to do something with this uh, subject. Uh, so the basic question is, how can we use new technology to repurpose Wikimedia content in museums? So um, I started on this project um, uh, November last year, and I started thinking like, yes, augmented reality. That's, you know, it's a bit of a buzzword. Used to be pretty cool, but, you know, it, it's, it's, <laughs> I'm not quite sure if, you know, it's, it's like, you know, there's a lot of times when you see there's this new technology and people are like, yeah, we should do augmented reality. This is cool and this is wonderful. But I started thinking like, yeah, it's, you know, I mean, Google Glass didn't really work. And, you know, maybe we should do something with the Oculus Rift or something. Or we should do, you know, new technologies or... <laughs> But, you know, all these technologies are quite, quite new, are still quite, you know, in its infancy. And actually, I wanted to, uh, to, to make something that was actually usable, not just like an experiment. I wanted something that was actually being used by people. So maybe we should look at something that's a little bit less, um, not as, how do you call it, not, as, not in its infancy, but a little bit more uh, mature. So maybe QR codes, maybe we could use that. And it's like, <laughs> no, let's not use QR codes. It's just, <laughs> it's, it's like, you know, it's... Things like this, it's, it's just, you know, it's pictures of people scanning QR codes, and of course there are no pictures of people scanning QR <laughs> because nobody does that. So I started thinking like, you know, it's many times we, we, we think about new technology like this is like, you know, wonderful and it's all cool, but in many times progress doesn't mean, you know, having a new technology and doing cool stuff with it. It usually means having existing technology and improving on it. So for example, if you look at something like the iPod, it wasn't the very first MP3 player, but it was a very good MP3 player. So Apple figured out, yeah, this, there is a product, but it's not quite up to par. Let's make it, let's, uh, let's make it better. So um, I more or less uh, used that thought, like, how can we reinvent this project? So I thought, like, the basic question is not how can we use augmented reality. The basic question is how can Wikipedia content improve the visit of a museum guest? So that's more of a free, a, a larger question. So um, uh, what we really want is you want a beautiful, well-designed way to read Wikipedia articles in museums, but more like a pocket guide, you know? People used to have pocket guides, bring them to a museum, read about uh, the context of the, of the museum. And um, one thing I noticed on, because I started talking to people in the sector, like, what do you guys actually want? What do you think would be interesting? And they said, like, well, one thing we don't want is Wikipedia replacing our science, our content, because, you know, we have spent a lot of time creating the best... Uh, um, 
signage, the best text, etc. We don't want Wikipedia replacing that. And I thought, no, of course, we shouldn't do that. Um, what we want to do is we want to actually add to the whole experience. We don't want to replace stuff. Um, so one choice we made on uh, pretty early was like uh, um, museums can actually control uh, what they, what the visitors will see from Wikipedia. Of course, they can't control the content, so they can't say like, okay, this article is not good, uh, rewrite it or something. They can just uh, choose which articles will be displayed, but they can't choose the content of it. Um, one other thing is that many times, you know, um, in the original proposal, it was like people could get more information about one artwork. Uh, the problem is, of course, that for many artworks, we don't have a lot of extra information. And actually, a lot of the extra information is already next to the artwork on a sign. So it's like you are making a photograph of an artwork, and then you get the sign again. It's like it doesn't add anything. So, but there are lots of other things that add a lot to the project, like, for example, um, contextual information. If you go to a museum, you might want to know more about the painter. You might want to know more about the historical context of a painting. You want to know more about the museum, about the city it's in. So there are so many uh, topics, so many contextual um, articles that could be used to, well, you know, uh, 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 make the visit of the, of, the, of the museum visitor better. So one other important thing was, you know, getting partners. So um, we got two partners, uh, Museum Katerijnikov and the Utrecht, and I'm very glad that two of the people there are sitting right there. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, the Museum Katerijnenkovent is a museum for uh, um, the history of Christianity in the Netherlands, and it's in Utrecht. And we got the textile museum in Tilburg uh, that does lots of things with fabrics and textiles. So um, one other thing which is very important is, you know, I mean, I can't build yet because I'm managing it. So we needed somebody who could build, you know, a very nice, proper, well-designed app. And um, we found Stromfly, which is a, a small uh, Utrecht-based web development company. But they have a very uh, a good background in product design. So they actually know what people, you know, how can you make something that actually looks nice and is usable by, uh, by users. So what they did is they built the app and they designed the actual physical experience. So in this, this, um, this, this specific project, there was an internet kiosk. And um, of course, we are Wikimedia, so we are not going for closed source implementation. So everything they do will be open sourced uh, in the coming weeks. So the first phase was, you know, um, thinking about this project. So I said to them, okay, let's make something. We're going to focus on one platform only to make it easy. We're just going to focus on iPads. We're just going to focus on portrait mode. It will be a web app. It won't be a native app. So we can't port it to other platforms in the future. But for now, we're just focusing on one form so we can uh, get the most out of that. Uh, so what they did, they made lots of wireframes, started talking like, okay, how can we, you know, make this the most, the, the best possible uh, solution um, uh, for this problem, and uh, here it is. So, what you see here is like a video I took of the actual app. I'm not going to try to demo it both and talk because that will be uh, will be a little bit difficult. So, uh, what a visitor sees when he first um, uh, enters the museum and sh and looks at the app is this thing we call demo mode. So, what you see here is the collection of the Katerijne Convent. They select these articles. And it automatically shows you highlights from the collection, like, okay, this is an interesting article, this is interesting, etc. And if you want, if you have an iPad, you can actually go to the URL at the top. That's the live application. So what happens is you can just, you know, it's, it's all to lure visitors into, you know, maybe try this, you know, touch, touch me. So if you really scroll, what happens is demo mode is disabled and people can actually read the article. And like I said, it's just the Wikipedia article, but uh, styled in a more visual way. So there's a button at the, bot uh, at, the, at the bottom to go back to the top, so you can uh, you know reread the whole section. And um, obviously we want to have these images, and we want uh, people to be able to view them full. So here we have this, well, guy <laughs> in an orb. And uh, so it's, it's more or less we looked very hard at the at the uh, the current implementation of Media Viewer, the iOS app. So we have some kind of a you know. Um, reused existing solutions, but not in code, but just in how it works. So of course, if you can't read Dutch, you can also read these, these articles in any other language that they are available. So this is the English article about, uh, about Alp. And here is another guy with an Alp. Um, and one thing is that if you scroll down, uh, well, this, this will be shown later on. Um, well, of course, if you are a little bit older, you can't read the text very well, you can actually uh, increase the font. So you have a uh, you can read the text better. And if you have a very uh, long article and you read, what will happen is just like in the iOS app, um, at the top you can see that the 
uh, the, uh, the chapters will change. So you can actually have an overview of all the different uh, chapters that are available in the article, just like you know from the iOS uh, uh, app. So here we are. So, and all these articles are like are, are the real-time versions of the articles. It's not like we, uh, you know, uh, they are cached once. You can, uh, if people do an update and people reload the article, you get the new version of the article. You can also search in the, in the whole application. And one thing you might notice is missing is that, that we don't have hyperlinks. Because we thought like, you know, we really want uh, for people to read the articles that are selected by the museum. So, of course, uh, if you allow hyperlinks, people could click through to... I don't know, Pokemon characters, Batman. Might be a little bit weird if you read that in a museum and people are biased like, oh, it's an article about Batman. Why is that, you know? So we really want to have this, this it's, I wouldn't say it's a controlled environment, but it's a very, it's, it's a restricted environment because we want to, um, to enable the museums to have, you know, select the articles they think are best for their collection. Um, well, like I said, the museums can actually uh, edit the articles in the app themselves. So there is like the simple backend where they can select articles uh, from, the, uh, from Wikipedia. And actually the only feature or feature that we have is that people can select a different image for the overview that you saw at the top. And this is very convenient because, um, if for example, you have an image you have donated yourself, then you can select that image as the leader image in the, uh, in the app. So, um, well, we have the app, but we also need something to put the tablet in. So uh, we have this, uh, uh, this internet kiosk uh, stand. And it's like, uh, it's, it's actually, it's, it's quite low cost. It's like, I mean, a thousand euros sounds like a lot of money, but if you are working in a museum, you know that these things usually cost a lot more than that. So it's basically just an iPad. You, have, you need a stand and you need some kind of stickering. So what we have here is a print, a custom print on the front that indicates it's a Wikipedia collections thing. As you can see, it's not custom to a museum, so that means that if you want to use this, you know, if you want to lend it out to another museum, that's fine, you know, it doesn't say uh, uh, what, what museum this thing is actually in. So we could, you know, I could really imagine that these, uh, these internet kiosks could also be available in a library, in an archive, anywhere basically where you could, uh, where you could uh, uh, have contextual information about something using Wikipedia articles. Um, so a little bit more about the two museums and how they integrated um, uh, the application in their museum. So the Katerijnen Convent, uh, like I said, is uh, focused on the uh, present and past of Christianity in the Netherlands. And one thing they did before we started with this project is they donated uh, over 2,600 photographs in the high-resolution TIFF format to Wikimedia Commons, which is really awesome because now we have wonderful uh, images that can illustrate the articles that they have added in the app. Um, they also organized an editathon to improve the articles. And uh, one very, uh, very cool thing is that we actually got, um, for one uh, artist that is still living, we got him to release uh, some of his work on the CC by SA. So, thank you, Ruud Piet uh, Peters, because this is all on Wikimedia Commons and it's uh, a free license. So, um, this is the app, and here's the internet kiosk in, the, um, in what they call the Katerina Zaal, which is like the highlights of their collection. And, um, for example, here at the top left you see uh, an article about the first translation in Dutch of the Bible. And this, this cabinet or this closet is, actual, is the actual cabinet where they kept the translation in. And the article that you see here is about this translation. And the image you see there is this closet. So it's like a, it's like a little bit of, a, of a, an, uh, an image uh, together with the object in the museum. So it's like a bit of a, how do you call it? Uh, it's, it's like this, this, this exhibit meme, you know, yo dog, I put a cabinet in your image, in your, well, whatever. Um, the Textile Museum uh, also has this, this internet kiosk, and um, they focus on the history and knowledge of textiles and, and fabrics. And one very uh, cool thing is they have this living lab where people can actually experience uh, many of the uh, uh, methods they use to create these fabrics. So you can see people weaving there or tufting or stuff like that. And they also uh, have a library with a very large cabinet with different types of fabrics. So this is the place where we located um, uh, the app. Uh, they also had a small editathon and they donated a few images so we could, you know, also illustrate the articles in a in a in a in a more uh, in a better way. So here it is at the textile museum. So at the top left you see the cabinet, and in these um, drawers you can see all kinds of specimens of different kinds of fabric. And the kiosk is right next to it. And, um, well, like I said, it's still an experiment. So what we really want to know is, will people actually use this? Because it would be a bit of a shame if people just 
walk by and don't use it. So uh, what we can do is we can track uh, user behavior. I mean, it's not like, you know, we're not Google, so we won't take pictures of people while they're doing it and sell stuff to them. We're just tracking people, clicking on the links. Are they actually using it? Which articles are they reading? Which articles aren't they reading? Um, and like I said, uh, the selection of articles is completely, uh, well, up to the museum. So if they want to include articles, well, from anywhere they can. And, uh, well, potentially it's in 288 languages. So, um, well, if you think like, oh, this is awesome, I would want to sing as well. Uh, Wikimedia Netherlands is, is looking for, you know, if there is like a second phase with this project. So if you think like either my chapter or my glam would somehow like to improve on this product, then, uh, well, please get in touch. Thank you.